Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to be talking about Figma MCPs or the Figma MCP that Figma has introduced. Now, a lot of you may be considering that this video is a bit late because a lot of creators have already created it, but I did not want it to create it because the previous MCP had some issues. One of the major issues that they actually had was this one where the Figma MCP was just not able to export uh, images. So I actually created this issue nine days ago and then someone I think from Figma or whoever actually replied um, that this is now fixed. So I'm gonna show you how to actually use Figma's MCP which is much more stable now in two awesome manners and how to configure it. Well, the first thing is you need to go to this guide, just search for guide to the dev mode MCP server and you can then start and enable it. Obviously, the first thing that you need to do, I'm just going to go here and teach you, is you need to go to the main menu here. Then when you're in the main menu, go to your preferences. When you're in your preferences, there is this um, enable dev mode MCP option. And then there's this, this also dev mode MCP server settings. And now recently they have introduced this option for use local image server. That's all you need to do on the Figma side. Once you have that enabled, you need to go into any tool that you're using. Now the Figma MCP guide actually has this for let's say VS Code, Cursor, WinSurf, Claude, other editors. But just for Claude, you need to just copy this code or obviously you can copy this code as well. Once you actually have it, I want you to go to cursor. I want you to go to settings and then cursor settings. Here you are going to see this tools and integrations tab. Here you can click on just adding a new MCP server. Once you do that, you can actually get something like this and you can just copy paste it. What I've pasted here, I think may be similar to what you have in let's say VS code. But if you want, you can actually just copy the cursor code as well. Let's just go ahead and actually update that. So I'm going to copy paste the cursor code. And as you can see, we have Figma here. Now, as you can see, it says green, which means that it's not working fine. So we're just gonna disable it and then enable it again. And it should be working fine now. The first thing that we're going to do with this is we're just going to copy this grid page that I created in my previous grids video. You can just press Control L or Command L to copy the frame, or you can just right click it and then say copy and then go here, copy link to selection. Again, as I mentioned, you can just press Command L or Control L. And I'm just going to go to my cursor. When I have my MCP enabled, I can select Claude 4 or 3.5. It works both ways as well. And I'm just gonna say, create this page. Now, sometimes it may take some time to actually create it, maybe two or three minutes. So I'm not gonna sit by and wait for that. Um, hopefully if it actually starts doing it a bit soon, I can wait. Otherwise, I'm just gonna fast forward this video. Now, as you can see, it has pretty much created the whole page and it's explaining what the page is about. So we're just going to accept it. We're going to go into our browser and we're going to open this page now, which is the page that we have. So as you can see, pretty much everything is done. It slightly missed this particular part, but for the most part, I think it looks really good. And let's see if it actually works responsively as well. I mean, it is working to quite an extent responsively as well and it looks good. So I mean, it did a pretty awesome job and let's see if it has any other effects. Obviously it has the hover effect and some basic stuff, but as you can see, it has now extracted all of the images itself. And we can ask cursor to do any fixes that we want. So on in, all in all, honestly, it's pretty amazing, especially considering that this is actually using the new grid layout that Figma is actually supporting. And this is uh, similarly built on a grid um, CSS or a grid structure, very similar to Figma. So that's nice. The other thing that I want to show is, let's say if I go to a particular component library, like for example, Untitled UI. I have my Untitled UI component library. I have these buttons here. Now, Figma MCP is really useful in extracting styles and creating components and stuff along those lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project here. Uh, basically, this is a new project. I'm going to open the project. Let's say I'm just going to include it in my GitHub. And I'm going to say that this is going to be my Figma React MCP test or something along those lines. Now, as you can see, this is an empty uh, folder. I'm going to ask it to generate a React project using Create React App. So we're first going to just start off with a basic React project using Create React App and let's see what it does. Okay, so I think our project should pretty much be done. We can just click on npm start or run that particular command to start it. We could have done it from here as well. 
and it's just going to set up a server for us to actually start looking at this and let's see if it has started Yeah, I think it's working. Okay, now what we're just going to do is copy this button component and say create a react, create a component like this and also include the different variants in the main page as a preview. And let's just see what it does. Now again, as I mentioned, I may speed up the video. Now, as you can see, it has created all of the different variants here as well. We have our primary buttons, the different sizes with icons, with submitting, with disabled, the secondary, the tertiary with hover states as well, clickable states as well, as you can have a look at it. Then we have the icon buttons. Then we have an interactive demo, secondary button clicked, primary clicked and the ghost style and stuff along those lines. Now, I personally think this is amazing. Could I have done the button component slightly differently? Maybe. But I mean, this is a huge start. And if we could do that for every single component that we have that we want to export from a design library, or let's say, uh, basically include the whole design library, this is going to just ease the process quite a lot. So it's pretty amazing. And again, uh, sorry for creating this video a bit too late. Um, I'm sure you already are aware of this by now. But for those that aren't, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon. I'll definitely be seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.